simply to even be able to recognize or name that they were abused. Um, the Adult Survivors Act will give many survivors that time back. The truth is, and we all know this, every survivor deserves the chance to seek justice in the way that feels right to them. And we know the members of the assembly understand this because they gave survivors of child abuse this chance in 2019 when they passed the Child Victims Act. Since then, more than 10,000 suits have been filed. And the assembly already made prospective changes to the statutes of limitations for survivors of sex crimes. So it's clear that the members of the assembly understand why this law is important. They understand why survivors need it. They know that survivors want it. So I'm asking, what is it going to take to get this bill passed? I'm grateful for our strong advocates in Albany, though they aren't with us today. I want to especially thank Senator Brad Hoyleman and Assembly Member Linda Rosenthal. We could not have made the Child Victims Act a reality without you. And when the Adult Survivors Act passes, it will be because of your leadership. And of course, it will be because of the incredible survivors who keep standing up to demand that the assembly do the right thing. With that, I'd like to pass the mic to Evelyn Yang. Thank you, Liz, good morning. I am appalled by the inaction of our lead legislators in New York. We have spent years now talking about the merits of the Adult Survivors Act. We have spent years talking about the science of trauma about the years and decades it takes to understand the true reach of serial sexual predators, many of whom chose New York as their personal playgrounds for sexual violence. Predators like Harvey Weinstein, Jeffrey Epstein, Donald Trump, and former OBGYN Robert Haddon. The Adult Survivors Act passed unanimously in the Senate now for a second year in a row. And with just a few weeks left in the legislative session, it is again being held up in the assembly. The bill has wide support, including a majority of sponsors on the assembly judiciary committee. But without the go ahead from speaker Carl Hasty, the bill will just die again, like last year when he didn't even bring the bill to the floor for a vote. The burning question now is why the inaction it is outrageous and begs the question with the majority of co-sponsors, what is keeping the gatekeepers in our assembly from bringing this legislation to a vote? Don't you dare gaslight us with questions about the bill's merits now in your final working days this session. What your constituents and survivors want to know is who are you protecting? What is preventing you from doing your job to reflect the will of the people? I have been blown away by the hypocrisy of our state leaders in recent weeks. After the SCOTUS leak on Roe v. Wade, our leaders in New York have rushed to the podium to declare itself as a leader in the fight for protecting women's rights. Speaker Hasty urged us to preserve, quote, New York's legacy as a progressive leader and said that the time to act is now. Such impressive urgency, such conviction. He personally referenced the outdated laws and recognized the personal and complex nature of a woman's most intimate decisions. So the question is, why do women's rights matter to you only when it means that men are not threatened with being held accountable. When you are assaulted, it changes you. To know that your body can be hijacked for any reason is deeply disturbing. As victims of sexual assault, we had no choice in getting assaulted, but we should have a choice in holding our perpetrators accountable. If Speaker Hasty truly cares about protecting the bodily autonomy of women, he must pass the Adult Survivors Act to give survivors of sexual assault in New York the agency to pursue some degree of justice. Again, we have more than enough co-signers and votes to pass this bill. At this point, 
the second year in a row, the inaction is an insult. Roe v. Wade is unquestionably popular in New York, but real leadership is not just pointing out the obvious and using the talking points that are built on the backs of painful, complex experiences of women. Thousands of women and survivors in New York are waiting on edge, waiting to see that New York's commitment to lead is not just lip service, that rising to the podium to criticize injustice against our bodies is genuine and not performative, that the concern is not just convenience, that our lead legislators truly care about our choice. Bring this bill to a vote, give survivors a chance to heal and give the people the voice they deserve. Thank you. Thank you so much for those powerful words, Evelyn, and for your clarity and leadership. And now I'd like to welcome Marissa Hochstetter. Thank you, Liz, and thank you, Evelyn. Always, thank you. Um, so Mother's Day was this past weekend, and as a woman who was abused while I was pregnant, abused by my OBGYN while I was pregnant with my twin daughters, I often have really mixed emotions on that holiday. This year was even more fraught due to the converging forces of the leaked uh, Supreme Court draft opinion targeting women's bodily autonomy and the New York State Assembly's failure to bring the Adult Survivors Act to a vote. It's been uh, almost more than I can bear. The speed at which these New York electeds, and Evelyn referenced some of um, the speaker's remarks, uh, the speed at which these electeds have posted supportive statements for women's rights is in sharp contrast to their sluggishness around passing this simple law allowing adult survivors of sexual violence access to justice. Being able to hold abusers and enabling institutions accountable is part of the bigger picture for women's rights. If you don't support that, then you don't really support women, no matter your views on abortion. This is a time to expand rights for women and survivors not be stuck in the mud with antiquated patriarchal views of trauma and justice. The Adult Survivors Act is a simple, plain language bill that is not trying to trick anyone or play political games. It's trying to offer a path to justice for those abused when they were 18 or older, like I was. The act is modeled on the Successful Child Victims Act. So what's the holdup when it comes to adult women? Why are our bodies and the right to take control of our lives subject to this debate? It's not up to lawmakers to weigh in on the merits of our cases or pass judgment. All survivors want is the right to pick up the fight in the courts. Lawmakers' personal opinions should be irrelevant to our decisions about our bodies and our path to justice. Adding insult to injury, the Democratic majority in the assembly has the votes needed to move the Adult Survivors Act through the Judici Judiciary Committee until the full, or for a full vote. A bipartisan coalition of over 70 assembly members support the bill and many have been vocally calling for its passage. The Senate, as we've shared, has unanimously passed the bill two sessions in a row. Speaker Hasty and Judiciary Committee Chair Chuck Levine's refusal to bring the bill to a vote leaves survivors wondering who they are protecting. It is certainly not women's rights. I want to stop fighting about trauma. I want a clear path to seek justice. It's time to pass the Adult Survivors Act without further delay. Thank you. Thank you, Marissa. That's exactly right. I'm now going to turn it over to another um, survivor and champion, Drew Dixon. Thank you so much, Liz, Evelyn, and Marissa. You know, I agree with Liz, Evelyn, and Marissa and would like to know what is taking the New York Assembly so long to pass the Adult Survivors Act? Why can't they find the courage and the resolve to pass this bill? 
even as we, as survivors of profound pain, healed from our trauma, we advocated for this important legislation as citizens. Why can't elected officials find the same courage and resolve? We found the will to carry on for years without justice. And we expect Speaker Hasty and the New York Assembly to find the will to carry the Adult Survivors Act across the finish line. We have been brave and fearless. And now it's your turn. Our elected officials need to step up and be for women's rights and pass the Adult Survivors Act now. Drew, thank you for bringing your courage and resolve as you always do. And now I'd like to welcome Rita Passarell, who is far too aware of how the assembly has failed to support survivors over the years. Rita. Thank you. Thank you, Liz. Thank you, Evelyn and Marissa and Drew and everybody else who's spoken and worked so hard to get the bill where it's at. Uh, I'm Rita Passarell, a co-founder of the Sexual Harassment Working Group. As both a lawyer and someone who has um, challenge the New York State Assembly for workplace harassment. I am all too familiar with the institution's instinct to protect itself first. I experienced that myself as a young staffer fighting then Speaker Shelley Silver, who failed to hold Assembly Member Vito Lopez accountable after I reported him for sexual harassment, allowing him to go on to abuse more workers, including with physical attacks. And my fellow working group member, Elizabeth Crothers, experienced it when Silver's former counsel, Michael Boxley, raped her as a young staffer over 20 years ago. Under the Adult Survivors Act, she would have recourse to sue the assembly for protecting her abuser and obstructing her pathway to justice. What Elizabeth and I experienced is called institutional betrayal. And it's the wrongdoings that are committed by an institution upon those who are dependent on the institution in other words, we went to the institution, the assembly for help, and instead we were further traumatized. I'm calling on the assembly now to reverse that and show institutional courage and pass the Adult Survivors Act. When I was raped many years ago, I did not even consider pursuing it because I know that our state laws choose rapists, not survivors. Speaker Hasty, you have the chance to change those dynamics and to be on the side of survivors and victims. The Adult Survivors Act is a bipartisan bill with massive support in the assembly and that's already passed the assembly twice. Our status quo in New York State is that every day, survivors wake up and know that those in power have chosen the side of the abuser. Every day we wake up and know that many of us have no recourse for the invasion of our bodies, and that is because our laws reject that option. Every day the assembly does not vote for the Adult Survivors Act is a day they vote for abusers and rapists. That is the state of New York that we have today. Assembly Speaker Hasty, what is the holdup? Stop stalling and bring the Adult Survivors Act to a vote now. Rita, thank you for your courage and that call to action. And now I'll turn it over to, wel um, to welcome Gloria Allred. Gloria, I believe you're muted. Thank you. Thank you very much for inviting me today, Liz. And I'm so proud to follow all of the brave survivors and advocates, uh, including Rita, uh, because I did represent Rita along with uh, wonderful New York Council, Marianne Wong. New York State Assembly, Carl Hasty, has nine session days left to stop standing in the way of justice. The New York State Senate has already passed the Adult Survivors Act, ASA, twice, two years in a row by a unanimous vote. We know that we have the votes in the New York Assembly Judiciary Committee to send the Adult Survivors Act to the floor. And as has been mentioned, 
there are 70 co-sponsors of the bill, including Republicans. This is a bipartisan bill with massive support. The only man in the way appears to be the assembly speaker. Speaker Hasty, why will you not allow legislators in the assembly to vote for the ASA on the floor of the assembly? Why does the ASA remain bottled up in the assembly judiciary committee? You have the power to release it for a vote on the assembly floor. Why would you not allow this vote? Why are you denying justice and access to it for victims of sexual abuse? How many times do survivors have to relive their trauma at a press conference or in front of legislators before you take action? The ASA is the same as the Child Victims Act, which the Assembly passed nearly three years ago with near unanimous support, except that the ASA would allow a one-year window for adult survivors of adult sexual abuse to sue those whom the survivors allege have sexually victimized them. The New York State Assembly has an unfortunate and appalling history of standing in the way of survivors as Rita just mentioned. I wonder if there are some legislators in the assembly who are concerned that if the ASA becomes law, that victims whom they have sexually harassed or sexually assaulted may be able to sue them and have their day in court. Given the appalling history of the assembly on supporting survivors, I urge you, Speaker Hasty, to reveal the names of all of those working behind the scenes and in the shadows to prevent the ASA from moving forward. I am especially interested in the names of those individuals who have sexually harassed or sexually assaulted women and who have a stake in stopping the ASA from becoming law, because these wrongdoers do not want to take the risk of being held accountable. Surely, survivors should have the right simply to file their cases and have the opportunity to be heard by a judge in the civil system of justice or a jury. We urge Speaker Hasty to allow a floor vote on the ASA immediately. And we urge all legislators to pass the Adult Survivors Act now. Thank you. Thank you, Gloria, for your fierce advocacy for survivors um, and for your words. I believe we'll open it up for questions now and I'll turn it over to Alexis to facilitate this part. Thanks Liz. So I see we've got some reporters on the call. Please feel free to drop your name and outlet in the chat and we'll call on you in the order in which you do that. And you'll you know, feel free to ask a question. We'll give you a minute to drop them in. I see Karen DeWitt, I see Alex Crichton, Grace Ashford, 